Hey gals and guys, welcome back. I'm Hayes, this is Armin Brownies, and here is another sculpt. This time another Undertale sculpt, being Sans the Skeleton. And we can start with me looking at rather skeletal reference images, because I wanted to do something a little different from most cartoonish Sans masks that you see around. I wanted to make one that actually heavily referenced actual anatomical structures of the human skull. Now, I know Sans isn't technically human, he's a monster, but you know, he's basically supposed to be a human skeleton. So we start off by laying all the foundations of the sculpt over our plaster cast head, means we have a nice surface to sculpt on for the rest of this sculpt. And boy, is this a rest of a sculpt, as this actually, this took quite a while, as most sculpts tend to do, but this was also a spur of the minute idea. I basically considered on a Wednesday night, whilst playing League of Legends with some friends, I know, you know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to start a sand sculpt because I had the idea of doing something that was more realistic. I don't really mean realistic because you'll see at the end of this, it's a giant smiling face. So kind of back half of a skull. But I do want to put a higher fidelity into it. So the whole thing has a kind of skull texture to it. So it isn't just a white pixel-esque character. It isn't just pure white. I want to put a little bit of bone texture in there. And I want to include some of the anatomical structures that you actually find on the human skull. I think that adds a lot of depth to an overall costume. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you can just do sand. It's a, a big round hourglass head with his eyes in there and a hoodie. But if it's a wonderful day outside and you want to have a bad time, you can spend eight hours of your life sculpting a realistic, human, smiling, giant cartoon skull. Now, one of the reasons why I'm sculpting this is because I want to create a mold for this, much like I did for my old Groot costume. So I could do a big foam head now, I had the choice between either casting it in silicone and then doing polyurethane cast or making a fiberglass mold and doing latex and foam. For some reason, the concept of doing latex and foam as a big squishy head rather than a solid plastic helmet appealed to me a bit more as it errs a bit more towards the cartoonish nature having it a bit squishy. But it would also mean it's a lot more one size fits all and there should still be some space in there for the electronics to go in. Now you've seen the sculpt go on so far, we've put the face in there, we've cut the eyes out, we've gone round the back of the head and for the first half of the sculpt it was really really long in the back of the head and actually almost two hours of my sculpt after the first four hours were spent going back cutting the back of the head off, cutting a lot off the front of the head and just making it a lot more plump because originally it looked like a Geiger-esque alien in how long the head was and how far back it went and I had to go back and put a lot of work into updating that and then also widening the face a bit so it matched up a lot more with a human skull. And one of the ways I realised what I needed to update was by taking a lot of photos of the whole thing all the way around it and just comparing them to my reference images. Because looking at a single object for a very long time can make it very hard to judge what's uneven, what's not, what needs updating. But then I also shared it with my followers on Facebook and in a couple of Facebook groups and got some fantastic feedback from people. People told me where I was going wrong, what they thought made it look a little too creepy because at the end of the day, Sans does want to be a little bit creepy because he's a skeleton and you know. And from that feedback, I, I did things like made the eyes a slightly different shape than I'd gone for. I, I changed the shape of the nose a bit and I actually brought the nose out a bit to be a little bit more three-dimensional. And also, I got a lot of confirmation on how much people liked the idea of doing the sand skull head. So, so that made me feel good about what I was doing. Now, as we get towards the end of it, now as we get towards the end of it, I go over all of these cracks that I've put in multiple times to make sure they are nice and defined. To make sure they are nice and defined, I'll get caught by the mold making nice and well along with making sure the teeth are actually per properly smooth and aren't textured because I texture the entire head with a sponge to give it a dried bone effect and then actually add a couple of cracks over the big plain spaces on the back of the skull because although he does suit having big white space on him I think because sculpting renders something in higher definition than real life, adding little details that make sense actually improves the quality of the entire thing because it gives more visual interest to, to the final sculpt. And there we have it. That is our finished sands. And 
now we're going to dunk him in fiberglass and get ourselves a mold and maybe even have one of these ready for London Expo. Woo! Anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you've learned something from this. I hope you're enthusiastic to see how this comes out. If you are, do be sure to like this video, comment below, and share it with any Undertale fans you know. Thanks for joining me, and goodbye.